Can you rekindle spontaneous desire in long-term relationships? I got this question a lot, especially people refer spontaneous desire to the honeymoon stage in their relationships. Is it possible to return to that stage? After the relationship matures and you build more love, comfort, and safety with each other, it's possible and you need a different driving factors. Hi, I'm Jane, an intimacy educator and coach. I help people survive in love, sex, and relationships. Let's say the first two years of a relationship is like extended honeymoon stage. A lot of sparks, novelty, and adventure because you're, you are with somebody new and it's very exciting. The phase two, when you settle in a relationship, you build a lot more love, safety, emotional connection and comfort with each other. The phase one connection is like fire, electric. In phase two, the connection is more like water, the mousse, nourishing, and runs deep. It's really comforting. You can see the fire and water, different nature. How can you bring the fire back without losing the benefit in the water connection? We need to set a right benchmark. If your benchmark is the fire connection stage, the formula is to find a new person. But a lot of people don't want to lose the benefit of phase two, which makes total sense. You need to set the right benchmark, a new elevated standard for intimacy and sex life. To bring back this spontaneous desire, the next thing is to look at which part of you is showing up in your intimacy and relationship. When People settle into phase two, and often there is an action it caused by the unhealed parts of each person. Our intimate relationship, especially a committed and secure relationship, is the closest environment to our upbringing. Therefore, our conditioned or wounded part of us feel safe to come out, to show up. For what? For healing. If we are not aware of this fact that this part is showing up in intimate relationship for healing, we avoid, criticize, and fight with the wounded child part. So strategies from the wounded part will only perpetrate the cycle of hurt. Instead of giving the healing that the wounded child part is looking for, a lot of the relationships start falling and lose connection because they let the wounded child part sit on the driver's seat and play with each other. In fact, there are three parts in place, the wounded and unhealed part of each partner and the third thing is what they co-create together. Without addressing the first two parts, there's literally no way to figure out how to co-create together because the wounded part is only interested in being right and being safe. They are not the wise, intelligent, adult part of us that wants to build a meaningful connection with conscious inner work to heal and integrate the wounded part of us in each partner that will free up so much energy used to fight and nag and avoid and chase with that abundant energy and the healing in place. There's connection. With connection, there's a lot more desires to explore each other and to co-create that will give the foundation for desire, including spontaneous desire. Another critical factor in rekindling desire and bringing back spontaneous desire is to claim your pleasure and your sexuality, especially on the female partner side. Why? Because females are so conditioned to repress our pleasure, and our sexuality. So in the phase one stage, it's easy to go by, but deep down, if you do not own that pleasure is your birthright, and you do not have a good connection with your own sexuality and with your body, in phase two stage, you will see when the fire connection fades away and your true connection with your body and sexuality show up. I've heard the male partner side reported that 
I don't know why, but after six months, nine months, or a year, my partner's desire just went down, and I don't know what happened. One of the things is, if the female partner does not enjoy intimacy, just do it to people please or to keep the relationship going. That performance will only short leave. Ever I support female client, there is a critical part of the work is to connect with your body, your pleasure, and knowing that your pleasure is not what you see from the media and it's not the pace or turn on that people think you should have, but you explore and discover the pace the turn on and turn off for yourself through body connection. You will have the confidence to speak up for what works for you, your desire, and your want. Your partner will love to hear that and co-create that with you, but without knowing your own body and your pleasure. Your partner cannot read your mind. This is called pleasure liberation. Without owning your pleasure and speak up for your pleasure, there's very little room for desire, especially spontaneous desire, to come in and play. Okay, to summarize, we need to know that bringing spontaneous desire back and ignite passion in a long-term relationship. The first is to set up the right benchmark, which is to elevate the connection and intimacy, not comparing what you had in phase one, the fire connection state. And the another two pillars are so important to support your connection and the spontaneous desire. The first is to do the conscious inner work to heal and integrate the wounded part of you and don't have it be on the driver's seat in your relationship. A second pillar is to, to claim your pleasure, connect with your body and sexuality, and remove the should, shouldn't, especially address any shame related to your body and sexuality so that both parties can show up not giving in to the survival strategy, which is to control, fight, avoid, or chase. Instead, use the energy to open up deeper connection and welcome more novelty and adventures. I would love to know if this has resonated with you and your comments. Subscribe if you are new to here, and I will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.